Good afternoon. We are starting our uh, fourth panel, and the host of this panel is Professor uh, Rafał Reguła. Rafał, please, floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope, uh, welcome everyone. Uh, I hope that after lunch the spirits are elevated. We've got plenty of uh, strength to further explore these interesting, to interesting topics. Um, I am really greatly honored to uh, have the opportunity to moderate or host this, this panel. The, our panel is uh, entitled Affected Groups, the Perspectives of Groups Under Stress. And we have today three distinguished uh, guest speakers who agreed to share with us their knowledge about uh, fake news and uh, their consequences for individuals. Our first uh, speaker is Professor Maciej Pilecki, who is working at the Department of Child and Adolescent Psychiatry at the Jagiellonian University a Medical College here in Krakow, and he will give us a talk entitled COVID-19 in the Seek of Facts. Uh, uh, welcome, Professor Pilecki, and uh, the screen is yours. Thank you very much. Um, so, in a moment, I start the presentation. Could you see the presentation? Is it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, thank you very much for inviting me for for this meeting. And uh, uh, actually, this is not a, um, a topic of my scientific interest, but uh, the the question of uh, misinformation facts and the consequences of the misinformations on everyday physician and psychiatrist work. Uh, becomes more and more important, especially during the uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemia. Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic, oh, sorry, mm -hmm. uh, the COVID-19 pandemia uh, is a substantial global challenge, uh, and what's I think that very, very characteristic for for for, for this um, this type of uh, of medical problems is that the decision of a single person can influence uh, life of um, big population or almost the the the, the whole population because. Uh, um, all um, pandemias would start with an, a patient zero, so the very patient that start the, um, the problem, and then you can observe how all, very often regarding to the decision of single uh, uh, humans, uh, the, 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 the virus can, can spread or bacteria can spread. Uh, the misinformation could be a important problem then because uh, people can uh, turn to uh, look forward an ineffective remedies so that they are mislead uh, and that they are receiving the guidance that something is going to help that actually is not going to help. Uh, that some of the remedies could be uh, potentially harmful or danger, uh, that they can overact, but also that they can underact. So all these issues would be due to the misinformation and would be due to lack of uh, um, proper knowledge um, regarding the problems as the COVID uh, uh, 19 pandemia uh, is. Uh, and this seems to be a rather huge problem because um, it seems that it, it is the research about the YouTube uh, videos where um, 25 of them, and it, the, there were top videos about the COVID 19, uh, they had some misleading information and uh, there had been 62 million viewers worldwide. Yeah? So it shows how the lack of a proper information or the misinformation could be harmful and dangerous for the uh, population, not exactly of one country, but uh, uh, internationally. Uh, uh, 
the research about how what the consequences of uh, lack of a proper or uh, uh, false uh, informations are gives um, t three areas that we have to be aware of. First one is that people uh, that are um, under the influence of misinformation can not want to vaccinate against COVID-19. Uh, that they will not recommend other to vaccinate and um, what is uh, especially important nowadays they are not uh, willing to comply or it, it decreases the willingness uh, to comply with uh, some guidance measures. Uh, so these are the three areas that what we find in the research would be important due to the uh, misinformation that that uh, people are challenged with and this is an example of uh, misinformation on two levels because first of all uh, this is uh, i will show you the, the the what what donald trump really said but um what is uh, written here is uh, cl close to his words but there is not exactly Donald Trump willing people to, to drink Clorox. And it is always the question, uh, is this kind of the, uh, of the mem uh, only a kind of a funny comment to, the, um, to, to, his, to his words, or is it the information that people can use and can misunderstand. We are not going to go through the detailed description of uh, the, what Donald Trump said on April 23rd, but uh, it was rather his question, that recommendation that people uh, should uh, use uh, the substances like Clorox to, um, well, to deal with the, the SARS-CoV-2 infection. But as you can see, this is the USA Google Trends that a um, few days after uh, his, uh, his talk about that issue, the, 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 the questions about the use of uh, disinfectants uh, started to rapidly increase and there were some um, risky behaviors of um, not very, not, it, it was the, the, the single cases, but, but it show us uh, how the misinformation can go around uh, around the world, go around one country. Uh, we don't have time to, 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 to speak about that, but um, when, we, when, we, uh, when we have an uh, issue of medical populism uh, due to the, what politicians are doing, there are, there are four areas. This is the uh, simplification of pandemic, dramatization of the crisis, in contrary, uh, 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 to the simplification, forging of divisions. We, we know it well also from our country. Uh, and what Trump did and what is uh, correlates with uh, three thirds dimensions is invocation of uh, knowledge uh, claims uh, that um, has some political reasons. Uh, who believes in fake news regarding the, the COVID-19 pandemic? Older citizens, uh, people who are self-reported, uh, they, they come from minorities, uh, they have repeated exposure to fake news, uh, the feeling of deprivation, lower trust in science and scientists, uh, lower trust in journalists, lower trust in government and uh, conservatism in political uh, beliefs. Uh, well, we, ha we have some kind of a hopeful thinking that uh, education can lead to the, um, can challenge the acceptance or uh, believing in misinformation, but it is questionable. Um, even if it is a matter of life or death, as it is in a COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemia. Uh, so there is an idea of inoculation against fake news, like we have a uh, medical inoculation, 
but there are some reasons why we can have doubt if it is really possible to do this kind of uh, fake news inoculation. Um, in, um, in study about the agreement with aphorisms uh, and these uh, aphorisms were uh, having uh, mm, uh, uh, without the source attribution, it is quite high um, that people accept from from very difficult different group they they accept the, the or they agree with aphorism uh, uh, if they don't know who is the author of the aphorism. But when the author of the aphorism is someone they they don't agree or they don't believe in. Uh, they don't really want, they don't really agree with the aphorism and then their education has nothing to do this with that and that the, um, these beliefs are quite often part of our social identity and that the social identity uh, mm, that we choose the leaders that uh, express our aggression, not that the leaders who express aggressions uh, have our uh, mm, submissive uh, behaviors. So the, uh, it was an old uh, Chinese book about, uh, and this is a, 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 a sentence from this book, is the seek from truth from facts. And the question is that, uh, if uh, many uh, thousand years later, we are in the seek of uh, facts, not the truth. Um, so in a situation of regression, we are, we are looking for the miracle cures. We are looking for the gifted physicians. We even sometimes think about the physicians like almost um, gods or the health workers are like, being as a as a god, something someone very, very powerful because it could reduce our anxiety. But the question is, what about the healthcare professionals and their beliefs in a false knowledge or false informations? Um, this is a important issue due to the COVID nineteen pandemic because we had been challenged with many. Uh, informations that they were um, giving kind of a, a opposite data and uh, that the, at, it had been in a kind of a contradictory informations in, uh, in, in the scientific journals. This is an example uh, on March 14, French health minister Olivier Varane tweeted that uh, talking anti-inflammatory drugs, for instance, ibuprofen, uh, could be risky for the patients uh, having the COVID-9 infection. Uh, and in, within 24 hours, over 43,000 people retweet this advice. Uh, it was also an opinion from the World Health Organization um, leader, one of the leaders, Christian Lidimer, about that. In 24 hours, um, uh, the authorities recognized that it seems to be not exactly true information, uh, that it is based only at the a single letter published online in the Lancet on March 11, uh, not giving any research data, but rather the opinion of the authors about the reaction between the uh, ibuprofen uh, and the uh, uh, um, increased expression of AC2 uh, and facilitation of COVID-19 infection. And here you have the Google waves in France, then in Poland, and probably being uh, kind of a master in, uh, in uh, in, in uh, collecting or taking this data and changing this data into the graphic, uh, um, into the graphic um, expression that we, we can create the wave, the Google wave to hold the world regarding the question, uh, uh, coronavirus, ibuprofen, 
uh, and we can see how this information can go all around uh, the world. Uh, so a little bit about my department um, and the uh, fake news issue that we deal with and the ways that we decided to um, uh, to, 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 to challenge this problem that that in at, uh, at the beginning of the uh, at the beginning of the um, first wave of um, pandemia we uh, were transferred into a covid-19 unit for the psychiatric patients and one of very important changes that we made into our functioning was that we started to have the team that was collecting, updating research-based knowledge and guidelines about the COVID-19. And important part of uh, these uh, uh, reports, this is in Polish because I'm not going to go to details be, uh, with that. It is all what kind of example of, of work of, of uh, our colleagues uh, Dr. Marcin uh, Siwek and, and team, that the important part of, of that uh, um, reports were uh, uh, informations uh, about uh, data that we can trust, yeah? the information that we, we can trust. And uh, for us, it was something very important that there was someone who was a group of people who were searching uh, finding an exact sources, finding the information that we can rely on, and that it can reduce the level of, of our tension uh, or regarding, for instance, our fear that we are going to die and uh, uh, how risky it is to work with the COVID-19 patients. Uh, um, um, we, we, we had uh, nine reports. Uh, that uh, had been uh, um, um, made on a weekly basis, changing also the information that had been in a prior reports, updating them and updating uh, our knowledge. So, uh, so what have you done to fight the false news? And I decided to end my presentation with uh, uh, my personal fight and as you know uh, uh, usually usually when we have the um, conference presentation about the drugs it is a uh, conflict of interest disclosure and what i decided to do was to do the risk of misinformation disclosure in this um, presentation um, and for, for, first of all, I'm not sure if on slide three information is taken from Pennycock paper or Rosenbeck paper. I miss it at the very beginning and well, then I, I base off my memory, not uh, double check in the internet. Secondly, the information about the Book of Chan was taken from Wikipedia. Um, and the translation of the title of my presentation into English and Chinese was done by the Google Translator. And what makes me a little bit afraid about that is that I haven't found um, a similar title, title in the internet. So it means that it is probably brilliant and this is something that um, no one else think to do, or it is not very uh, British English. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you, Professor Piletki. This is really, really, really a pleasure to listen to this talk. A lot of interesting information. I believe we have two questions from uh, our listeners. And um, <clears throat> one is how we can distinguish between fake and true information regarding COVID-19 pandemic. Is there any clue mm -hmm. how we could, uh, how uh, average person could, could distinguish what is true and what is untrue? I think this is very difficult and that um, 
we have to base on uh, um, scientific newspapers, but then we have to be aware that it is the opinion of experts, that there is a single case, that is a research, that this is a meta-analysis. And what we have to be aware of that there are very big differences between the reliability of the sources. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So what at the very beginning of the pandemic, that was the idea that the, the adolescents, they are not going to spread the, 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 the virus. And then what we learned from our um, experience was that uh, it is not true. But it was the experts' opinion that probably they are not going to, um, uh, to, to th that this is not going to be the the, the, the important uh, um, uh, important issue. So um, double check, check the uh, what is the source. Then uh, in three week times, check if it is still something that you have to believe in. And uh, don't trust that something, or, or don't rely on the data that was collected and that the knowledge you get one month ago. You have to change. You have to. You have to be uh, very clear and 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 uh, involved in that. But if this is a newspaper knowledge, uh, well, uh, it is better not to use it as a source of, of, of important information. Yeah, but because because what you, what you said is like scientific method of distinguishing yeah. between uh, the fake, what is fake news and what, what mm -hmm. could be true. But is, do you think, is there any like single cue which just the average person, not scientists, mm -hmm. uh, someone who does not have access to, you know, uh, specialistic medical databases could do to, on the first sight, yeah, you, you can you can find the uh, um, in internet. You can go, find uh, uh, blogs of, of physicians that you can uh, find uh, people who are uh, well, they are scientists, and um, this would be the, the the important source of information. But then you have to have your critical mind, and you have to uh, 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 to have also information from different sources to see what are the differences, what are the um, points of view of different experts. This is the only solution we can have. Not on, probably not only due to the COVID-19, but probably due to the all data, all information we are getting. Yeah, okay, thank you. We, we've got the second question. Um, oh, even third question. Uh, let's start from the, from the last one. Uh, from your last slide, we see that there was a serious lapses in communication about COVID from experts possibly adversely affecting public policy. How can we recover from this without risking generalizations leading to mistrust in scientific community? Uh, this is the issue, but you know that I, that I noticed something that was uh, due to the single information, but important person. Uh, but uh, what is the, the, the most dangerous thing, uh, I think, is the interaction between uh, science and politics. And we see it in chloroquine issue, yeah? that there were some single studies about the chloroquine use. And then due to the uh, politic medical populism, they were used in, um, uh, by politicians to do what the politician usually do. So to try to, to uh, con control, con control people. Uh, so um, uh, <laughs> I don't think that it is the question of the trust and the lack of the trust. It is the question of asking questions and uh, looking for the answers, but also having this what is characteristic for the scientists. So the answer is not the true. The answer is the answer. Yeah? So um, I don't think that it is kind of a possibility of being back into the world of harmony and uh, uh, having the trust. Uh, th this is a complicated world and uh, with a lot of conflicts and also a conflicts of interests. Okay, thank you very much. We've got also one more question. Uh, I believe this is addresses your uh, psychiatric background. Do you think mm -hmm. uh, that there is... Uh, 
that susceptibility to fake news can be somehow um, associated with some sort of psychiatric disorders or, uh, you know, yeah, this is the question. Well, oh, actually, the question was whether whether people who believe in fake news are somehow mentally disordered. Is, can, can we make such a generalization or find some overlap between vulnerability to fake news and some sort of? Uh, no, I don't think so. Person. And this is the this is the way of thinking we had in fifties, that there is uh, that there are the people who are uh, willing to be controlled. And there are people who are regressed, and then it is aggressive leader that is taking control towards them. Uh, it comes from the uh, uh, Alice Miller bad education about the Hitler and the people who followed them. But what we know now is that the people who want to have the conflict with other group of the people, they're choosing the leader that is... Uh, that prove them uh, that uh, their aggressive behaviors are not going to be stopped and that they're going to be effective. And I am afraid that the fake news are the weapon, not uh, a mental illness. Uh, and we know it from Poland. We know it from Poland because we know that, uh, well, I, I'm not going to be very, very into the, 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 the politic issues, but we know it that, uh, uh, when there is a kind of a strong belief, the people who has this belief, they don't want data that will challenge the way they think. And uh, partly this because the they, they emotional attitudes, but partly this cynical. I think that in, in fake news in medicine would be the same. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. I, I, I think you. we should uh, go forward. Uh, if there are any more questions, maybe if you stay with us, yeah, and I will stay we, can, we can discuss. And uh, so thank you again. And now I would like to uh, welcome uh, Dr. Katarzyna Bonkowicz, who is affiliated with the University of Social Sciences and Humanities in, in Warsaw. And she will tell us a fascinating story about Blue Whale Game. Uh, her, her talk is entitled Fake News, Real Consequences, the Blue Whale Game Study. Uh, Dr. Bonkovic, uh, the screen is yours, please. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for invitation. Yes, the story about Blue Whale Game. Um, okay, so maybe at first, um, maybe at first uh, my presentation. Uh, just a moment. Okay. Okay. Um, okay, so um, um, a few words of uh, introduction because um, the real consequences, the consequences of fake news are the part of my study about uh, Blue Whale Game. And there was uh, very big studies from uh, two years. And um, that was about um, fake news as a phenomenon in 21st century. So today about, uh, uh, about consequences. But uh, the first point, the important point is the birth of the Blue Whale game because um, the whole story began on March 2016 in Russia, of course, when uh, Galina Mursayev in uh, Novaya Gazeta was published uh, her article about suicide to teenagers. Yeah, it was the, the title of this, uh, this article was Suicide Groups. And she, in this article, described um, in details uh, two suicides and everything will be okay, but um, an author connect these two suicides with 130 other suicides. And uh, uh, the one and only um, key um, and the common point was um, uh, the fact that every victim, every 130 person, has a, a profile of uh, contactee platform. So what is Contactive platform? Contactive platform is uh, something like uh, Facebook, Russian Facebook, with the 90 uh, million users. So it's not so, um, not so 
uh, not so small. Yeah. Uh, and uh, um, Galina Mursayev said in this article that um, the problem of those victims and, uh, uh, and the common point was uh, uh, the blue whale game. And she said the blue whale game is a game in the internet and uh, you log in on the sites with this game only in internet and you have your mentor or something like this and you have to do um, many things and the last things 50 uh, is a suicide yeah and that's all um, next day of course after after this publication um, a lot of media from the around the world um, has a question okay uh, what is the problem what is the blue whale game um, how do you find an every victim all victims 130 yeah, in russia Mm, and in the same, the same time, uh, after publication, next day after publication, uh, vice editor in chef was fired to the use of unacceptable methods of verifying information. Um, but the um, me media panic started. And it's very important fact here in this moment that uh, in the 2016 world media and the government institution in many countries confirmed that the story is fake. Yeah. So after uh, journalist investigation and the uh, um, government process, uh, we knew it that uh, the story is fake. In 2016, too, was arrested Philip Budakin. Uh, he reported to the uh, police uh, himself and, and said that he is an author of this game. Now he is uh, in prison in Russia, but only for encouraging to um, commit suicide to teenagers, his friends, but not to teenagers from article and not to teenagers from 130 others in article. Um, but the story was beginning. Uh, what is the true story? The true story is that there is a game called Blue Whale and still is this game. And this game is only on the smartphones on, or tablets, not on the desktop. Mm, and this is a game uh, on the website of a French producer of Echo Apples. Uh, and this is not uh, this is not fake and this is not a joke. <laughs> and the goal of, and the game um, is that you uh, you are the uh, blue whale. You have a basket of your head, basket with fruits, and you uh, have to overcome um, distance in different countries. So this is a very simple game to small kids. And the second fact is there are suicide groups on the internet which incite you to commit suicide. Um, on the full legal internet, uh, we have without problems find uh, web um, pages uh, with information about techniques and tools to commit suicide. Yeah? And the fake news in this Blue Whale Game story, it's connect to different unrelated facts. We have to remember that uh, fake news, there is not the same so false news. Sometimes in translation we have a, a two, two words, fake news or uh, false news, but this is not the same. Uh, we have to remember about um, Claire Ward uh, typology. Uh, she um, gave us seven types of fake news between satire and lying. Uh, and fake news is in the middle of that. Yes, yeah? so the lying is not the same um, uh, like fake news. Yeah. And in this in this case, fake news there are connect to real to different facts. Uh, methodology of my studies was uh, uh, I research media materials from 30 countries around the world. Um, and this was uh, uh, media in all four types, so press, radio, television, and internet. And I researched the content of media materials and visual components, see how uh, media presented the topic. And uh, today, 
um, today my speech, uh, I research what were the reaction to the publication in all countries. And I would like to explain about this reaction and this consequences. Results. So these consequences were in 21 countries. Um, Saudi Arabia, Bangladesh, Bulgaria, Egypt, Ecuador, France, Greece, Honduras, Iran, India, Ireland, Canada, Kazakhstan, Kenya, Mexico, Mongolia, Malaysia, Moldova, Portugal, Russia, and USA. 21 from 30. I think it's a um, it's a big number. Uh, I divide uh, the consequences into two types, and um, that one, uh, the most important fact here, uh, I would like to say that uh, this conclusion from this study is uh, the fact that the, in, in one material, in one from the 30 countries materials, um, was information that fake news, that blue whale game is fake news. This is a one material from Austria. In any countries, in any materials, we haven't this information. And I think that um, a lot of materials still are in the internet. We can find them. So um, I divided the consequences into two types. First are the consequences of, on the educational system and the second on government institution. Um, in my opinion, these uh, consequences from education side are positive. Yeah, because in five countries, Bulgaria, India, Ireland, Honduras, and Canada, we had, a, for example, preventing medic in school with students and parents. Uh, we had a educational campaigns about online threats. Yeah, so there, these consequences um, are the positive because they play a preventive role. Yeah, and now, if in 21st century, if we have a chaos of information, if we have a too many fake news, yeah, and we have a problem to check uh, information, to verifying information. So every campaigns are good, and every meetings with students and parents and the people um, about knowledge and the tools against this information are positive. But the results, the consequences from government side, from government's institution, are not so so optimistic. So in 80 can 18 countries, we have a very, very uh, real life uh, consequences, very serious consequences. Um, the lot of uh, that was in nine countries that are police action uh, actions. And here uh, we had uh, two types of uh, Polish actions, so our prevention and uh, investigations. And that was a similar like in an educational um, consequences because this prevention that are meetings with people um, about the possibilities dangerous uh, and warning in internet. Yes, so but um, initiation from this meeting was not from school, like in the other consequences, some the, from the uh, government's inf institution from police. And the second was an investigation in every, um, every situation around uh, suicide. Uh, second popular uh, consequences, if we can uh, speak about it, uh, were uh, in four countries, were creating a department for fighting to, uh, for fighting cybercrime and helping the victims. And I think that we're still in this uh, positive space of consequences because um, helping the victims is uh, still, we need this institution and the department for, cyber, for fighting cybercrime too. And everything will be okay, but we have to remember about one fact. Every consequences are only after media materials, only after publication, not after analysis, uh, consultation, or something like that, not only after media publication. In two countries, in Kazakhstan and in Moldova, we had an extraordinary government meetings, only of the topic of blue whale game and possibilities uh, dangerous from this, uh, this situation. Um, I think that we have to 
see and we have to think about uh, about one type of uh, of this government's uh, consequences there is from the bangladesh it's slowing down internet speeds during the night uh, between 9 p.m and 6 a.m uh, internet speeds uh, was slowing down in bangladesh so in this moment, I uh, think, for example, about journalists who have to prepare news to the next day. Yeah, maybe we need some information. And without full uh, speed internet, it is impossible. So after media materials, only about maybe is a blue whale game. Maybe it's dangerous. Is slowing down internet speeds. In one country, in Russia, was the plans. Um, in media articles, uh, we can um, read uh, about the plans of using army, the army against suicide groups on the internet. We don't know um, its continuation of, of this or not, but the plans uh, were were. In uh, one country in Saudi Arabia was launching services that were to limit access to the game. And this is very, uh, very funny, I think, because which game? Yeah, so if we hadn't a uh, blue whale game, this blue whale game, this dangerous blue whale game, so which um, game we uh, were to limit access? In the second, in uh, one country too, in Egypt, was an official government appeal to the Ministry of Communication to block access to online game, games. We have to remember that online games now in 21st century are a big, big part of a branch of online business and um, computer business, internet business. Yeah. So um, block access to online games is a very big problem. It's an economy problem to, to, this, uh, to this part of this business. In one country in Ecuador, we had a request to Interpol in helping to prosecute game administrator, administrators. Mm, we know that, uh, that we haven't uh, game administrator, uh, but in uh, Russia University, I don't remember um, name of professor made a study about uh, Blue Whale game administrator. And he said the uh, results was uh, were administrators, but uh, after media uh, materials too. So not before, not when when um, the Blue A game was born, when the when this topic was started, when fake, fake news was born. So after media publication is Blue A game, and our administrators um, was a. Uh, we can find this administrator in online and very, uh, very important thing that every administrator was in the um, 10, 12 uh, years old. Yeah, so um, I think very, very young people. Uh, in one country in Iran was a blocking access to contact the platform. Uh, we have to remember that 90 million users without um, possibility to communicate in Iran after uh, media materials. Um, and which conclusions we have after, after this, this situation, when we, when we are listening on writing about, uh, about fake news, about Blue Aid game, I think that we have to remember that fake news were, are, and will exist. And Blue A game case show us that uh, fake news um, is very simple to prepare, it's very simple to distribute, and it's real warning uh, to all of us as a uh, society, modern society. And we have to remember that the consequences are very serious, and we have to remember that we as a user of users of, of social media, we participate in distribution process. Um, if we haven't awareness about online, about uh, cyber crime and about fake news, we need um, knowledge, we need the tools 
to verifying information and we have to start thinking before yeah for example uh, a study from i suppose it from mit but i don't remember clearly is a study about um, do you remember from where uh, you share an article of your social media 80 percent users don't remember from where are articles on my wall for example on facebook so i think that this is dangerous because this is a simple way to distribute fake news like for example uh, blue whale game so i think that we we can't stop um fake news but we can limit it uh, society impact of fake news. Uh, we have to build in an awareness of media. We have to, we need to still observe and uh, educate, um, educate us and, and react. What if I see a fake news? And um, so I have here uh, my, of course, uh, only my uh, proposition. Mm, that uh, if we gave uh, a tools from journalists, from media, and for us, for society, we can uh, limit uh, fake news uh, society impact. Media needs a standards of verifying information. Media needs a more discuss about ethics, and media needs tools to checking process. Now we have to remember that inside, in the newsrooms, in redaction, we have a um, conflict without, uh, uh, conflict between uh, ethics and economy. And the journalists are in the middle and they have um, preparing an articles, preparing a media materials. Um, without ethics or without economy side, and they have um, still um, still problem with that. And we need a society education campaign, knowledge about disinformation, took to, tools to checking information. Now, okay, um, we are speaking about, okay, check information, check in two places, yeah, um, but where? where can we need concrete we need concrete knowledge is uh, good um it is a good source uh, this is bbc or maybe um po polish public television yeah which source is good which source is um, gave us true yeah and of course we have to start um discussion about responsibility because I think that not this responsibility of fake news is not in only in media and not in social media. As I think this responsibility is, uh, is in the middle. Yeah, because we have to think that lying, it's more, um, it's better for, for our brain, for our, bra uh, our mind. Yeah, it's uh, more interesting. And um, we have to give people knowledge about true and false and fake news and speak about it. Um, and now is discussion um, in the public discourse is uh, about what can we do with fake news? And I ask, what can we do before we prepare to fake news? Because if we have fake news, of course we can delay it, or not, we can share or not, but this fake news is. And I ask, what can we do uh, before preparing fake news process? Thank you uh, very much. Um, and I uh, am waiting for question. <laughs> Thank you very much, this was a fascinating story. Uh, we've got actually several questions uh, from uh, from our listeners, and the first is from the person who just needs to uh, some clarification. The question is: uh, the first news about the blue whale game and its suicidal consequences were actually fake, 
and it got spread worldwide. And in the consequence, there appeared a real dangerous game. Is it true? Mm -hmm. the, the, the first, the game was just a fake news, but then it became somehow the real thing. Uh, is is this uh, is this a question here on chat? So because yes. um, and where is uh, which one is that? Because I don't see. Uh, is how popular is this game? To clarify. Ah, to clarify. Okay, okay, okay. I see. Um, okay. Uh, so um, the. Uh, one moment. Uh, the first, the first information about Lue Games, so the first publication uh, from Galina Morsaev, uh, was a um, was a um, that was a true, but in the other place. So, um, so be, because. Uh, uh, Galina Mursayev uh, said that two suicides had to connect with 100 other, 130 others, and the uh, um, and uh, and the uh, common point is uh, it's a blue way game. Yes, yeah? so um, I think that uh, popular um, that blue way game was a very popular because uh, that was very interesting topic, and this topic was interesting for everyone. Because it's about uh, life and death, about the teenagers. So everybody knows teenagers. Yes. Yeah? So it's, uh, um, you know, it's uh, if we have a fake news about the politics, um, we have, okay, politics is, uh, I'm not interested of politics. Politics is not my hobby. Yes. Yeah? So, and life and death is a hobby of all of us. Yes. Yeah? So we have to, okay, it's, and, and if it's, uh, life and death topic connect with internet yeah so i think it's a it's a perfect recipe to success really of course of course um, ironic is um uh, have any consequences been drawn from the fake news about the game i don't think so if we are if we can still in internet find the old article from 2016 for 2017 18 but we have a, an article from, uh, if I could remember, from July on this year. What is a blue whale game? Is it dangerous or not? Yeah. So, um, on the uh, on the question, can a similar story repeat itself? I think yeah, and I think that in blue whale game is a very important information for us as a society. This is a very important signal. Be careful because the fake news, it's a real problem for you. Yeah, I think that this is the most important consequences for, for us. Okay, uh, we've got some more questions. So shall I somehow moderate it or you, will, you would prefer to go? Uh, you can moderate it, it's okay. But I okay. See it. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that the, this question, the next question was asked when you uh, presented the measures taken by different countries to limit the impact of the game. And uh, the, the question is, what is the methodology of linking those consequences to the original stimuli? Were they directly quoted in public policy documents? Mm. Uh, one moment, I find that, okay. Um, uh, this um, I in uh, I research only media materials, mm -hmm. uh, and I had um, I don't speak uh, here in in uh, here my speech, but my study was in the thirty countries around the world and Polish media, and I had that of course in the thirty countries was uh, mm, not so. Uh, not so in details research because of course it's other languages okay if uh, that was for uh, for example english language or european language was okay but for example chinese or something like this was a little different mm, but um, for example in, in polish uh, polish space uh, what uh, was uh, um, information about blue whale game 
uh, was on the letter from Minister of Education to every schools in Poland uh, with communicate, be careful, we have a big dangerous in the internet and this is a blue whale game. Yeah, and this letter was sent 2017 uh, on March. So one year after uh, the Blue Whale game was born and uh, half after, um, half year after that we knew that the Blue Whale game is, uh, is fake news. Um, and um, very often in the materials from around the world was, um, um, was uh, um, a fr a parts um, from uh, original uh, government documents. Yeah, because there are, for example, sometimes uh, interviews with minister, interviews were uh, with with uh, somewhere, yeah, someone else. Okay, thank you very much. I, I, I believe that there is there is a follow up here to this question. Given the answer, are you not risking the fallacy of mistaking correlation for causation? Oh. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I uh, don't think so because um, I research, researched a uh, connection between media and society. Yeah. So uh, if our minister, minister of education of, uh, or um, other minister said after media publication, we make a decision so uh, I think this is a very serious signal, yeah? And, and that was very, very uh, important that uh, a lot of uh, materials was, was from the, um, not from the tabloids, from the very uh, seriously, um, very seriously media. And uh, the first, the first um, information, of course, about the way game was uh, in, the, in the Sun and the Daily Mail. But uh, if I could remember, on 2017, one information about the way game as a fake news was on BBC. The second material on the, from the beginning uh, 2019 was a very big material, very big reportage about um, how we believe in Blue Whale Game. But, uh, but this is very interesting that every media uh, believe of that because that was, that was like true. You know, that in internet we have a very dangerous um parts and very dangerous uh, websites in internet yes so that was like true yes so we, every everybody was beliefs of, of that okay i believe we have uh, time for just one question and three minutes to answer okay okay so uh, there is one quite interesting question can we hypothesize that some of those policy changes were really harvesting the media attention to provide a pretense to implement changes that were motivated by other factors. So uh, did the government somehow use this uh, hmm. uh, to, to, to introduce some other uh, changes? I think that of course we can hypothesize, uh, <laughs> uh, but um, okay, if we are thinking when I, when I researched case from Russia, I, I was so exciting because you know this is a place was where born this this is a big situation and that was very interesting that of course this was uh, one the one and only place that uh, we have a plans to use the army against against the uh, against the blue whale game and I think that this case um, will be only to to provide the pretense and, uh, and something like that. But other, I don't think so. I think that um, that was a, a feeling of dangerous, feeling of warning. And uh, I think that uh, people from government were scared. That uh, if I can remember in Egypt was a situation that the son of minister commits suicide. And uh, in this time, yes. Yeah, so, uh, so, so this uh, this minister said, "Okay, this is my child." So that have to be true. 
Yeah, so I think that was a, maybe not so long, but a time for just scared of everybody. Yeah. I'm afraid we have to stop here. It's, it's really pity. <laughs> uh, maybe, maybe there will be a chance uh, to, to answer some more questions later on, uh, maybe to the, to the uh, comments associated with the YouTube uh, transmission. Uh, I, I, I really hope so. Thank you again for participating. I would like to thank all uh, our uh, distinguished guests for, for being here with us today. Uh, it was really fascinating. It was, for me, it was pure pleasure to, to moderate this session. And I would like to ask now Jan Piasecki, Dr. Jan Piasecki, who, who, who wanted to, to say something at the end of our session. So thank you again uh, for your presence, for excellent talks and a lot of food for thought. And uh, now I would like to ask Jan to, to, to take the screen. Thank you very much again. Uh, thank you, thank you very much. I, because the, the, this is our last English uh, session. So I just wanted to take this opportunity to say goodbye to our all uh, English uh, only speaking viewers and uh, everyone, of course, who speaks Polish is invited to, to the next um, Polish uh, session. And I also thank all our speakers and all our moderators, session mod moderators and the questions moderators i want to uh, particularly uh, i'm particularly thankful and grateful and i want to express my uh, these feelings uh, to to towards three persons so first of all i want to thank um, mr Kam kamil mikulski uh, from the kosciuszko institute who helped us especially at the conception with the conception of this um, of this conference. Thank you. And the second person that I would like to thank is uh, Mr. Alexander Kulesha Milewski, who is the owner of the ECCT platform and who shared with us this, this platform free of charge and who was also uh, our technical support during this, uh, this conference with Zoom and, and so on. And uh, I also want to thank uh, Ms. Agnieszka Lempart, who is our uh, administrative manager. And let's say her orga organizational skills were really instrumental for this event. So without her, probably we wouldn't be able to organize uh, this uh, event. So thank you once again. And we see each other uh, in in around 10 minutes on the uh, on on the polish session so bye bye thank you thank you very much bye thank you bye thank you bye bye thank, thank you, you. bye bye